talk. Uh, before I go any further, I just want to give a little appreciation to the people who tune in every week, to the people who keep up with Mars Talk, and for the people who are constantly supportive of my content. But, um, yeah, um, welcome to the next episode of Mars Talk. Um, I hope y'all had a great week. It's been some things that we discussed <laughs> on today's episode. So let's jump right into it. So the first thing I want to talk about is the Oscars. The Oscars came on this past weekend, and um, if you tuned in, if you seen all of the black excellence that was going on there, I was really moved watching it because, like I said, it was just a lot of people look like us that was winning, and it was very well deserved, and it was very motivating because we, as the black community, we have made the arts, we have, we have mastered the arts, that's all I'm gonna say. We have mastered the arts, and it's a big deal. Every award that anybody wins, that, you know what I'm saying, that worked hard on their craft, and, you know, took it very serious, and put blood, sweat, and tears into everything that they did, bro. Like, every every award, in my eyes, it counts. Even if it don't count to them, bro, it's a big deal to us, you know what I'm saying, no matter what it is. but. Yeah, we showed up and we showed out for the Oscars and our work was acknowledged and our talent was acknowledged and um, I was very happy to, you know, witness that. Robert Kelly, um, oh shit. Robert Kelly was arrested um, due to um, th things that revolved around his recent taping. Um, and, and, and all of that shit, and yeah, they took him into custody, and you know, it was, it was looking really serious. It was looking very serious for him, and um, he was granted a uh, million dollar bill. He tried to make that bill, but they denied it. They did not accept it, <laughs> and that made us think that R. Kelly was, you know, gonna serve his time. But however, Valencia Patrice Love. Who has Nora Kelly's front? She paid a total of a hundred dollars, a hundred thousand dollars. Excuse me. She paid a total of a hundred thousand dollars to get Kelly out of jail. So she was working hard. She was pushing this shit hard to get R. Kelly out of jail. This, see, this is why. This, <laughs> this is why R. Kelly is going to keep being a piece of shit. This is why he's going to keep doing the shit that he does. This is why he's going to keep. luring girls into his trap. It's just, it's just like, it's crazy to me how anytime we think that justice is gonna get, that justice is gonna get served, when it comes to this nigga, it doesn't get served. It's always something, somebody's always there to save him, which is why he's gonna keep doing the shit that he does. Our piece of shit R. Kelly is gonna keep being a piece of shit R. Kelly. That's just what it's gonna be. We know why, so everybody's gonna keep saving him. Oh, but whatever, what are we gonna do? Ja Rule! <laughs> oh man, y'all, y'all, y'all tried to play Ja Rule. So Ja Rule, he performed at a halftime show in Milwaukee, and oh, <laughs> a video surfaced of him, you know, trying to get the crowd hype or whatever. And like, it was like crickets in the background. They said this is 90s night. So they brought out a 2,000 artist. <laughs> but my album came out in 99, so I guess that counts. Sanchez, we ready? Are we ready? I guess not. But the video was edited. You know what I'm saying? The video was edited, and y'all, y'all, y'all tried to, y'all, y'all tried to play Ja Rule, but he, he, he ain't having it. <laughs> he wasn't having it. So this past week, uh, new music has dropped. Uh, All Set dropped his new album, uh, Father of Four, and Gunna dropped his new album, uh, Jipper Drown Two, and many, many more people released albums, and clearly that many more I don't give a fuck about. A or B, I 
haven't gotten to you know their music yet. So yeah, all sets album I gave it a listen. Uh, it was cool. Uh, I, I fucked with it. Gunner's album I'm like halfway through that. <laughs> I'm like halfway through Gunner's album. So yeah, I can't have a full opinion about an album that I haven't fully heard yet. What I've heard so far is pretty decent. So yeah, good job. <laughs> Meek versus Michael Rappaport. Um, that's quite a discussion. Uh, so after Meek's performance at um, you know, All, All Star Weekend, Michael Rappaport went on Twitter, right? You know, after this whole Meek shit, and he just started carrying on. Let me read y'all the tweets. Let me read y'all the tweets. Meek Mill, great story, great look, trash rapper. Sorry. Where I'm from, if you get dragged by a drink and don't respond, you are and always will be whack. At least make it competitive, re-up something. People catching feelings because you know I'm right about Meek Mill. Uh, Meek Mill had a chance to prove that he was a dope rapper and then came Drake. That was a moment to stand tall as a rapper. Like I said, great story, great look, probably gonna do some positive stuff. None of that means you're a dope MC. Drag by Drake, um, see, look. Meek Mill had a chance to prove he was a dope rapper. See, look, here's my thing. And y'all bought me Four years back to this Meek and Drake shit. Here, here's my thing about that. He proved to us that he was a dope rapper. Years before this whole Drake shit went down. You know what I'm saying? When that Drake shit happened, a lot of y'all niggas was doubting Meek just because, like... I'm gonna put it like this. Put it like this. Meek, his audience is people who look like me, or come from similar backgrounds as me, and who face similar struggles as my kind. Drake, on the other hand, appeals to more than one audience: black, white. Y'all get, y'all get my, y'all get my, y'all, y'all catch my drift. Drake has more than one audience, so his fan base is way bigger than me. You know what I'm saying? So when that whole beef went down between them two, Drake having the bigger audience, being more popular, his fans didn't know or necessarily didn't give a fuck about me being a dope rapper. They just seen that Drake was beefing with this nigga, so they hopped on that L train and rolled that shit all the way until 2018. So what I'm saying is, Meek been a good rapper. He been a dope rapper before, during, and after this Drake shit. I don't understand why everybody took that whole thing with him and Drake and it determined how he was as a lyricist, how he was as an MC. All right, good example, everybody know. I'm, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a J fan, you know what I'm saying? But, Ether, Takeover, Ether was a better track. Did that make J less of an MC? I, I don't, I got a lot of problems with the whole Meek and Drake shit. You know why? Because when Meek and Drake was beefing, people were pretty much trying to shit on Meek. And I never, I never forget about that shit, bro. I never forget about that shit, because like, if I'm a fan of somebody, right or wrong, man, I'm still riding. So I necessarily agree with me taking the Twitter, but I was still on, I was still riding with me throughout this whole shit. I did not fuck with how after back to back drop, so many people stopped fucking trying to try to shit on me and try to make it seem like he wasn't a, a a good MC just because of that track. Like Meek been proved to us that he was a better MC before back to back. And after back to back, you know what I'm saying? And during that time period, this nigga put he can he consistently puts out heat. He consistently puts out fire. Like that's it. So I don't understand why niggas was trying to act like niggas was trying to test his 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 his, his pen after that shit happened. Like. Yeah, back to back was a better diss track, but at the end of the day, Meek is still Meek. Meek still put out fire. This nigga been putting out fire since 2008. I don't understand why y'all trying to shit on him in like the last man. Look, since 20, it's 2015 when back to back dropped. Y'all niggas took that L train 
and wrote it all the way to fucking 2018 until him and Meek came cool. No, until Meek and Drake came cool again. Y'all hopped off that L train and y'all started hopping on Meek's dick. You know what I'm saying? And started acting like, oh, well, he makes good music now. Yeah, and after the old Drake said he would he be on his old L train and then taking L's. My niggas, shut the fuck up. Y'all niggas... Y'all just don't know. Y'all just don't know his his fucking his catalog of fucking slaps. This nigga got slaps, bro. Go back to his mixtape days. This nigga been spitting heat. He's been a dope MC. He's still a dope MC. I don't understand why y'all took that one diss track and wrote it all the way to fucking 2018. Dick sucking. Dick riding. That's the problem. This generation is just all full of dick riding and it's just all about the popular vote. Like, it's all about the popular vote. It's all about who got the who got a bigger fan base. Like it's never about who puts out more meaningful content. Like y'all do that shit with every fucking body. And speaking of that, I was on Twitter, right? And somebody tweeted. Somebody tweeted this: the lack of attention that Wale Red Table discussion is getting to a woman that cheated with her best friend's sister's boyfriend is everyone telling the black man they don't care about his struggles with love and affection. Okay, with that being said, uh, Wale had an interview, um, a Red Table discussion, and it got overshadowed by Jordan Woods' interview, and, um, and I say this all the time, and it brings me back to what I was saying about how y'all constantly just shit on people who relate more than you, and have more meaningful content, because Wale is like up there lyrically with fucking Kendrick and Cole. This nigga is like, I don't understand why we don't pay more attention to Wale's music. I don't understand why Wale's fire kind of died down. He put out an EP last year and nobody was talking about it. <laughs> like, nobody was talking about it. And people always being like, but Wale, like, he he always whining and complaining about something. Like, this is just what it is. And I understand that to an extent. Because it's like, when you passionate about some shit, and you know that you better, and that you got more of a, a, of a meaningful message and better content than, like, 80% of these niggas, of course you're going to be pissed off. And of course you're going to probably complain about that shit all the time. But in the same sense, it's like, Just let the work speak for itself. Wale is better than a whole lot of these niggas that is in the rap game right now. We don't pay attention to his music. And it's really fucked up. Like, <laughs> it's really fucked up because Wale is like OD talented. He's OD talented. Like, you know, we don't talk about his music enough. And like I always say, man, it's always some good shit that gets overshadowed by some fuck shit. It's always like that. You know, you got Wale here who's talking about some real shit. And then you got Jordan Woods and this whole scandal shit that's being overshadowed by that. Sad to say, but it's really fucked up that nobody is checking for Wale like that. It's really fucked up. Like, it's really fucked up. And that shows you the kind of era that we live in right about now. You know what? Somebody asked me, why am I talking about Takashi? Why am I talking about Takashi? Yeah, yeah, somebody asked me, why am I talking about Takashi and his whole situation? Um, the reason why I talk about that is because certain things shouldn't be talked about. There's certain things that you can't even discuss. Certain things that you shouldn't really have an opinion on if, unless you're in that situation. So I can't talk about that. I can't talk about, like, I can't talk about that. And y'all niggas can't really talk about it either. Y'all haven't even been close to a situation like that. Like, Y'all haven't been in that situation, so y'all can't make judgment. That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> y'all can't make judgment because y'all haven't been in that situation. So, I'm not going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about this last week, but I was like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> why W. Miller? So, he is now incarcerated for being connected to the murder of his two friends. So now he's facing a lot of jail time. And wow, oh shit. It's crazy, he actually talks about it in his song. 
he actually talks about it in the song, which makes it more like, damn, like, what the, the fuck? <laughs> like, that shit is crazy. It's fucked up. It's fucked up. Like, I don't know if I should, I don't know if I should speak about this because I got to say it's something that you really should speak on. But I don't think that hip hop is about telling a story. Like I, I, I really, when you get really, when you really get like into it, like hip hop is about telling a story. And you know it has to be real. You gotta be transparent. But it's certain things that you really should incorporate into your music. Like murder that you were really involved in, like that shit, like that happened in real life. There's certain things that you shouldn't speak on in certain songs. Like look at Bobby Shmurda. You know what I'm saying? Like it is and what it's another rapper who got uh, locked up that like recently for that. Like I forgot his name, but it happens. Like what what you're doing and what you're saying is constantly monitored in hip hop. Is like the most policed genre of music, and it's crazy because it's like it's plenty of other genres where they talk about killing and all that other, all that other violent shit. But niggas don't pay attention to that. Just go out to anybody, no matter what situation, no matter what you're trying to get into. Like, be careful what you say and what you do. Okay. Certain things, do not put it out there. Because like I said, you are constantly being monitored. Like, constantly. Even when you think motherfuckers ain't around, they around. Be careful what you put in your music. Be careful of the pictures that you post. Be careful of what you tweet, okay? Be careful of anything that you say, okay? Like, be aware of all that shit because... It, it, it could get monitored and it could be used against you in, in any time. You know what I'm saying? Any time. That's what I say. It's, I, I constantly tell niggas this all the time. Like, stop posting pictures with guns. Stop posting pictures of you doing shit that you're not supposed to do. Stop doing that because it could get used against you. You don't know who, you don't know who watching you. You don't know who, who's going to tell. You don't know who's going to tell. So you had to be a hundred percent careful and mindful of what you post. So that's it for today's episode of More I Talk. I hope y'all enjoyed today's episode. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends. Uh, thank you once again for tuning in. I appreciate the people who have been rocking with me. Once again, <laughs> yeah, uh, hope y'all have a good week. Be safe, be blessed. I'll see y'all next week for episode 10. And I'm out.